Sonic X Shadow Generations is one of the best Sonic games we've gotten in a long time, so it's no surprise that after completing both games, I wanted to go back and 100% both of them. This video will be split into two parts, so if you're only here for Shadow, feel free to skip ahead. But first, let's start with Sonic Generations. Oh my rouge. <laughs> She's so bad. Okay, let's, let's go 100% the game, sorry. The first thing I did was start with the Big Bang achievement, which requires you to get an S rank in all acts. This doesn't include the challenge levels, so you only have to get 18 S ranks from the main levels. In order to get an S rank, you need to complete the level quickly while trying to get points from rings or enemies throughout the level. If you finish the level without dying, you will boost your rank up by one level, and the only way to get an S rank is to stay alive so you can change your A rank to an S. Alright, the S rank section of the YouTube video is going to go by in 10 seconds. I basically did them all on my first try. No way! I can't take this anymore! I don't want to play this level. I died from what? Does that spring just kill you? No spring, no spring. Or yes spring, no fire. What the sigma? All right, bro, I'm done with this level. What the fuck is happening? Ready, go. All right, man. Whatever, get me out of here. What was that? Was that the drop dash? Was that a drop dash? That was a fucking drop dash, wasn't it? I guarantee you that was a goddamn drop dash. Keep the drop dash out my damn 3D Sonic games. Yeah, we did it, boys. That's all the S-Ranks. There we go. Achieving the S-Ranks was pretty easy, and I only really struggled with the part on Crisis City. Next, I collected the red star rings. There are five on each stage, making there a total of 90 to collect. Yeah, it's just there's so many different paths that I'm gonna have to try to find them on. They're placed randomly along different paths of the levels, so for the ones I wasn't able to find, I used a guide, otherwise it would have taken me forever. I used a guide from the original Sonic Generation Steam page, but the red star rings didn't match up with the remaster. What the crap, why is it not up there? I was just over here. And it's right there, but it wasn't there. Why are they not the same? Oh, because this is just the normal generations. They probably switched it around. And there it freaking is. That's supposed to be the fourth one. And I'm not sure why, but when you collect them, they might be in a different position on the HUD, which is why I was confused when using this guide. After getting the red star rings, it was time to find the hidden chow. There are three different chow hidden in each level, making a total of 54 to collect. For the ones I missed in my casual playthrough, I used another guide to find them. You can be disappointed with me all you want for using guides, but without them, this game would take forever at 100%. Bro's behind the rocket. Ugh. There he is, bro. How's I supposed to see that? Dude, this guy hiding on the freaking fang poster. Ain't no way I was gonna find him. And then there's one right here under the sign, bro. No parking. 12 a.m. to 6 a.m., bro. And then apparently you're supposed to be able to see in this pitch dark room these freaking crates. There's one hiding in the damn crates. Take the middle ring and perform five tricks. It didn't let me take the middle one. Oh no! And it forced me to get the damn checkpoint. Take the middle path. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got him. There he is. The last chow is the freaking shadow chow. Chow rescue. We got all of them, baby. Next was the challenge levels, which consist of short levels with a twist, such as winning a race against a doppelganger, bringing the goal post to the goal without dropping it, or working with another character to reach the end of the stage, so on and so forth. Oh, I wish I was that robot. These challenges range anywhere from being a minute to a few minutes if it requires you to play through entire levels again. So they're short and sweet, but I forgot to mention that there are 90 of them to play through. This took me around three and a half hours to complete, and I was trying to go as fast as I could. I first tried most of them and thought they were pretty easy until I got to this vector challenge. Oh no! I remember this one being a pain in the ass. Oh, I remember this actually being a pain in the fucking ass. I don't know if they fixed it. Can we get, let me get this first try. Oh my. Oh! I beat this eyes closed, no breathing upside down, backwards, underwater, inside a volcano. No, you did not, boy. Easy. Dude, this is easy. Oh, wait, what, what? It's all about the movement with the sticks. It's all about the stick movement. 
Gotta keep it nice and... What the... Yo! Where am I going? Oh my god. Boom. Middle. Alright. Easy. Boom. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh my god. We did it! All the challenges! We did 90 of them! After completing each challenge, you can ring a bell above the gate to release a music note that will give you a collectible. There are 261 collectibles in Sonic Generations, and you get most of them from these challenge gates, while others you get from playing through the game. There is only one more achievement for Sonic Generations, which is to defeat the final boss without taking any damage. There are three phases to the Time Eater boss fight. In the first phase, he will try to attack you with his hands while there is debris flying towards you. The debris doesn't count as a hit, so the first phase is easy. In the second phase, he will start shooting humming shots which are easy to dodge since they're slow, but supersonic movement feels strict, only allowing you to go up or down in a circular motion. Come on! Was that, a, was that a spear? Was that one of his shots? Was that one of his shots, bro? The time eater will sometimes go outside of the wormhole, which you can switch to as well to get some rings. He will also use a warping arm attack, which can travel through both dimensions, so you have to be careful to not get hit from it. What is that attack? The third phase is the same, except he will slow down time, which does... Time's going to slow down! Bro, it's 9pm, come on, boy. Literally nothing. The hardest part of this fight is trying to avoid getting hit from his arm attacks while the humming shots are also trying to hit you. Go! That fucking hit me! But after an hour, I was finally able to defeat him without taking any damage. Please, please, let me go, let me go! Let me go! Fuck! Let me go! <gasps> oh my god, is this it? Is that just three? <coughs> is it just three hits? Oh my god, did I do it? Did I actually do it? Please tell me I did it, bro. Please. I did not take damage there. I got it! Oh, let's fucking go, baby! That took like an hour. Let's go! And with that, Sonic Generations is 100% complete. Overall, it took me around 14 hours to play through 100% the game, but I had fun with it. I used to not care for Sonic Generations, but as time went on, I played through more Sonic games, and I realized what makes the game so cool is all the levels you play through. It's exciting to go through Sonic's past, starting from the very beginning and working your way up to where he was at that point in time. I think Sonic Generations is an amazing Sonic game, and I'm glad it got remastered. Chaos Control! And now it's time for Shadow Generations. The first thing I went for in Shadow Generations is the S ranks. There's only 12 of them since the bosses and challenge levels don't count, so it went by pretty quick. The S ranks in this game feel more like B rank effort, and you mainly want to focus on using Chaos Control as much as possible to stop the timer. Easiest S rank ever. And there's all the S ranks, baby. Next up was the Challenge Axe. There's a total of 30 to complete. The only one I struggled with was Chaos Island Act 1, Challenge 1. There's a section you have to use the Doom Morph to go up and get two collection keys, but I did not know how to get up there. Apparently, if you release the trigger directly under the Morph Ball, it will shoot you upwards, which is something the game doesn't really tell you about. Oh, you just go directly under it? That's so weird. I don't know, I don't know, that doesn't make sense. I thought I finished all the challenge levels in my casual playthrough, but if you go into the Doom Zone, it adds two more acts to each zone. These levels are similar to the original challenge acts, but they're a little bit harder. The only challenge I had trouble with here is the Rail Canyon Act 1 Hard Challenge. You have to destroy a set amount of targets with your Chaos Spear, but the Needle Flapper enemies on this level drove me crazy. You have to spear them to get rid of their needles, but if you don't humming attack quick enough, then their needles come right back at you, causing you to fall to your death. It took a few tries, but I used Chaos Control at the end and was able to finish the level. There is also the Sunset Heights Act 1 Hard Challenge, where they place even more spike balls in the level. You only have one ring to reach the end with, and it took me a few tries, so I thought I should include it in this video. Oh, that was close! No, why'd I do that? And I did it! After the challenge acts, I had to get all the collectibles in white space. To get collectibles, you need to get collection keys to open chests scattered throughout the hub world. These collection keys are placed throughout the levels, and I went out of my way to collect them as I was getting the S ranks. I tried to find as much of these chests on my own, but eventually I had to use a guide to find the ones I was missing. It turns out there are actually two chests you can only open in the doom zone, so I ended up getting those ones last. There's supposed to be a chest right here. Hey, where is it? It's supposed to be right here! Why are there a bunch of chests? that just don't exist oh i think they might be when you're climbing up to radical highway oh hey there's one shit mickey ficky shit so the other will be on top of the bridge 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 
There it is. We got all the chests. Oh my god, that took so long. And we're missing eight screws to get the Cubot and Orbot. After opening all the chests, I was still missing collectibles, and that's where Orbot and Cubot come in. Orbot and Cubot have a broken rocket that they would like you to find parts for so they can escape white space. These parts are scattered one by one throughout the hub world, and there's a total of 80 pieces to find. I found most of them on my own, but there's no guidance whatsoever to help you find these pieces, so I had to use a guide or video or anything to help me out here. I was able to find a couple pieces I was missing from the guide, but once I was finished, I was still missing one more piece. I kept looking everywhere and went over the video again and again until eventually I found the last piece. <laughs> I swear I picked this one up. I swear on everything. I swear, I swear, I swear I picked that one up. I swear, bro. Okay, we did it. We got all the collectibles and we delivered the rocket parts. They better be taking me to goddamn tropical resort or something, bro. Oh, joy, rapture. The rocket is finally complete and there's the little flicky bird. Looks just like a clock. Egad, it's because it is a clock. So much for a flicky island vacation. At least we get to see one flicky in the end. Uh, is that it? All that worked with a rocket only to get a clock in a timeless void. Now how are we supposed to get home? Are you fucking kidding me? All that was left to do was to defeat the final boss without taking any damage. In the first phase, you have to avoid his bombs, which is easy since you can just side surf right into them. The next phase uses the Doom Morph, which should be easy to get past as long as you are careful and don't get hit by Devil Doom's laser. In the final phase, Neo Devil Doom will try to swing at you, and this is the only tricky attack to dodge. But as long as you move out of the way of where you originally were when he started the attack, you should be able to avoid it. He also shoots, uh water at you, but you can just spam the sidestep button to hit it back at him. Heroes rise again! Chaos control. Oh no, he's chaos controlling. Your future is, already decided. is that it? Did I win? Alright, that was it. We got the achievement. That was a lot easier than the time eater. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. We did it. 40 out of 40. It only took 24 hours. We have all of the achievements. And with that, I 100% Sonic X Shadow Generations. It took me around 24 hours total, but I enjoyed every second of it. Well, if we forget about Orbot and Cubot. I think Sonic X Shadow Generations is the best Sonic game we've gotten in a very long time, and if you like Sonic even a little bit, you should definitely give this game a try. I'm excited to see where we go from here because Shadow Generations is definitely a step in the right direction. If you enjoyed this video, I also 100%ed Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, so I would recommend those videos as well. I also stream on Twitch, so if you want to catch me live, I'll have the link in the description. And with that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.